Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the new Character Matters program, the program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we have faced for several decades now, and that has impacted so many areas of our life. Every aspect of our lives has been touched by this problem in one way or another and to one degree or another. And today's edition of Character Matters is a special one. Every year about this time, as our Independence Day holiday approaches in the U.S., I like to talk about in my blog articles at drgeorgesimon.com and in every other format about the precious freedoms that we enjoy, that we still enjoy, and the dangers to our liberty posed by the character crisis. And today is no exception. I've been writing for the last couple of weeks on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com about the most essential aspects of developing character, the two first commandments that I outline in my book, Essentials for the Journey, and that I first introduced in my book, Character Disturbance. Overcoming our inherent, our innate, infantile egocentricity, an egocentricity that all of us are born with and hopefully grow out of. And the second uh, principle of coming to appreciate this great gift of life and the responsibilities that come with it, not taking anything for granted and overcoming the massive sense of entitlement that is so easy to develop in a culture steeped with permissiveness, indulgence, and pervasive entitlement. Overcoming these two things is absolutely essential to developing good character. And therefore, it's absolutely essential to the preservation of freedom. As I've mentioned many times before in several articles before, all of which you can access on my blog. Freedom, the liberties that we enjoy, and I know I'm using these terms kind of interchangeably, is inextricably related to character. The two are inextricably interdependent and the founders of this country understood that. How do we know this? Because they said so, and in no uncertain terms. As they were beginning to frame the structure of an independent, free society, they wrote, this can't work except for the prevalence of decency of character in the populace, even the constitution that they were working on. John Adams said, couldn't possibly work, that it was meant for what he called a moral people. The idea, the whole concept, of this maximum freedom, maximum liberty society was this. Give people who already have a deeply internalized sense of fairness, of justice, of right and wrong, of appropriate boundaries, ruggedly individualistic individuals who also understood the essential requirements for living in community, in peace and in safety, who understood the basic rules of peaceful human engagement, give these folks freedom from oppression, maximum latitude, freedom to explore and develop on their own 
without micromanagement from an oppressive government or any other overseers. Give such folks latitude, wide ranging latitude. And what will happen is that they will not only prosper themselves, but because they have a basic understanding of what it takes to relate in a truly just way, they will also help the rest of the community prosper. They will take their place and do their part. And that's just one of the reasons why I've been writing about the socialization process, what it takes to become a civil human being, a responsible, respectable member of a community. What minimum requirements of character do you need to have for that to happen? And sadly, what has happened is that there are so many folks now it's so pervasive. It's become so commonplace. We're so horribly used to it that we barely pay attention to it anymore. Even when egregious manifestations occur and capture our attention for a minute, we've become horribly used to the fact that there are so many of us who are so dysfunctional that there is a constant invitation to micromanage our lives. Freedom hangs in the balance. Every time the unthinkable happens because some irresponsible character does the unthinkable or what was once thought the unthinkable, the rest of us rally and say, what can we do? What additional rules can we impose? What other restrictions on our freedoms can we mandate to ensure our safety? This is a natural and understandable reaction, but it doesn't address the problem. The problem is, was, and always has been character, individual character. And I am not saying that in times past, there haven't been nefarious characters among us. There have always been. We are natural brutes. That's how we start out. And we've always had character problems, but we also once better recognized how important this issue is to every single aspect of our lives. So we spent a lot of time and gave a lot of attention to trying to instill character, to recognizing character, to rewarding character, instead of becoming all too complacent about the vile displays of poor character that are so commonplace today. We all bear some responsibility for this. Now, I don't want to get too political here. At a time in which I truly want to celebrate the freedoms that we still enjoy. And in a moment, I'm going to uh, talk just a little bit about the sentiments stirred in me many years ago with regard to that and how I tried to inspire awareness about it all. But the fact is that we all bear some responsibility for this to one degree or another. And when we decide that it's okay to hand the reins of power to people of dubious or pathetic character, it's on us. It's on all of us. We are at each other's throats. We don't listen to each other. Many times we don't care to. I'm not taking sides here. All sides are equally guilty. Folks can't even come to the table without knowing full well how right their perspective is when they come to the table. 
so nothing can be openly and honestly discussed, or even properly debated. Things don't get done because it's too important for one side or the other to win. That, right there, as I write about in all of my books, is the absolute definition, is the very nature of the worst kind of character disturbance. The determination to have my way, because I believe my way is the way, has affected countless relationships in a negative way. It's an inherently destructive as opposed to constructive attitude. Now, I'm not one of those folks that says there are no rights and wrongs. I think deep in our hearts, all of us have a sense of what is truly loving and what is not. But we all fall short and we're all too willing to give character a pass when it serves our agendas and we are paying the price. So here we come to a very special edition of Character Matters. I'm going to tell you a true story about how my own sentiments toward this wonderful country of ours changed just before the new millennium. I was working on a manuscript that I never completed on the interrelationship between freedom and character. And a tune began to haunt me, truly day and night. I didn't even know what, uh, what I wanted to say, and I had never composed uh, a musical piece in my life before. I would put some words to an ages old folk melody one time, but I had never completely composed music and words to a song before. But this thing wouldn't leave me alone. And so in collaboration with my wife and some others, I eventually refined what it was I wanted to say and put it to the tune that had been playing in my head for years. And what was born of that was a piece commonly referred to as America, My Home. The official title of the piece is actually Anthem for the Millennium, because I wrote it as a piece to inspire folks as the new millennium approaches. And in 1999, when it was first published, nobody had an idea of what would be happening very shortly thereafter. And even though the song was put out, it didn't have much traction until the tragic events of 9-11. And then something caught fire. And since then, it's been performed. It's meant to be a performance piece in many venues across the country, by full orchestras and by individuals in their church gatherings, etc., etc. In just a moment, I'm going to make it the closing part of our program today. You can also visit the many versions of it by going to the page on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. But the song expresses the sentiment we have to take this gift of freedom very seriously and respect the inherent responsibilities that come with it. The freedoms we enjoy can only be guaranteed by people of character acting responsibly and preserving those freedoms. Because in the face of irresponsibility, gross irresponsibility, there will be a constant pressure to restrict our freedom. That's just the way it goes. So the song is meant to express a sentiment and it's meant to touch your heart and to suggest to you that to truly honor what we've been given, we have to take to heart the principles that sustain freedom, that make it possible. 
we have to be the kind of people that we have sometimes been. We have always had our problems. Once again, there's no doubt about that. We've always had nefarious characters with us. And we've also had our struggles for ages, developing the kind of character that we and others can be proud of. But we were also, in decades past, much more attuned to this, much more concerned about this. And that's how we came to enjoy so many freedoms, all of which are at risk because of the descent into self-indulgence and irresponsibility, selfishness, entitlement that has become all too common. So with that in mind, I wish you a happy holiday weekend, and I hope that you take into consideration the sentiments expressed in the piece you are about to hear, that you pay a visit to my blog at drgeorgesimon.com, that you avail yourself of my books in sheep's clothing, character disturbance, the Judas syndrome, how did we end up here, and most especially my latest offering, the culmination of a life's work, Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character, those proven principles for psychological and spiritual health and well-being. So until next time, I'm Dr. George Simon. I want to thank you for tuning in. And I'm pleased to present, and I hope you enjoy and capture the sentiment in your heart of America, my home. <music> I have seen the torch of freedom pass from hand to yearning hand, and the vision of our fathers spread hope throughout this land as the dream some fought and died for. In my heart becomes my own I will strive to keep her promise America, my home America, America May God bless Justice and liberty.